So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the day I met one of the top law firms in the whole world. And these are the types of law firms that represent billion dollar companies. Okay, I'm talking about banks, government agencies, royal family members, family offices, billion dollar hedge funds, billion dollar private equity firms, and high, high net worth individuals. I mean, more, in most cases, these law firms do not even represent high net worth individuals. These law firms represent high net worth institutions. Okay, the big money. All right. And I did not know that I was meeting a firm like that. And I wish looking back, I had known I would be a little bit more prepared. So here is what happened. Okay. So I, I had just built my board, I had picked an industry, you know, I had decided I'm going to fulfill my dreams and goals. I was in Dubai, and um, I decided, okay, I'm going to go into healthcare, I'm going to buy businesses in healthcare, I'm going to buy multi million dollar businesses in healthcare. And I had built a vision of the company, I had built my dream team. And I had recruited the top names in the whole country to be my share partners, shareholders and directors and advisors. So I did over three, four hundred presentations and I found the top guys and I um, have them as partners even now. At that point, I had just established contact with these individuals. The relationship was very fresh. So I put together a nice company profile using all of this. And now it was time for me to get a law firm and an accounting firm. So why do you need a law firm? You know, especially when you're buying multi-million dollar businesses, before you buy the business, you need to do documentation, uh, you know, sale purchase agreement, MOUs, various types of documentation that are necessary to execute the transaction. Not only that, one of the most important reasons is to do due diligence, which is investigation or, um, you know, before you buy the business, you need to understand if the business is worth buying and the information that the business has presented to you, is it accurate or is it fabricated? So for to, to check all of these things, you need a law firm. And you not only need any law firm, you need, you know, any law firm basically that's run by your brother-in-law. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't want those types of firms. You want top international law firms that represent the companies that I just said they represent. So I knew that and I knew that this meeting and these meetings are going to be way outside my comfort zone. Uh, I had never... Uh, I had probably been to a law firm once in my life and it was a very small local firm run by a very, you know, a top lawyer in the region had a firm, that kind of firm. But these firms are very different. They have 100 offices, 200 offices around the world and they represent the big money. Okay, so this is a very different kind of firm. I had never been to a firm like that in my whole life. I had never, I had probably seen firms like that in TV shows, but I had never been. Uh, I mean, the firm looked much better than the TV show Suits. Okay, way better than that. All right, this is a whole different level. So, I was told by my mentor that when you want to hire the top firm, don't go for your first meeting at the top law firm. Okay, start with a shitty firm, not shitty firm, but I mean like 20th or 25th. Uh, best and then you do a few presentations and get comfortable doing these presentations and uh, dress up in a suit practice you know you're doing presentation of your company your vision and then as you do several presentations you will understand how lawyers think what questions they ask you and what do they want to know what interests them basically collecting data uh, from their position you know what 
what is it that they want all right and what is it that's important for them so you do few presentations you understand how the dynamic works of the conversation and then you go to the top law firm so i just followed the advice and i looked up on um, on wikipedia and i found you know top 100 law firms in the world and the 17th or 14th or 13th i don't exactly remember the ranking and it was ranked by revenue all right it wasn't ranked in terms of their credibility or um the power that they have in the world it just was by revenue and just because a law firm has the biggest revenue doesn't always necessarily mean that they are uh, the top o okay uh, for example ford has probably more revenue than ferrari but that doesn't make ford the top you know um, that doesn't make ford the best car <laughs> all right ferrari is much better car but ferrari is catered towards um a very boutique audience a, a very um it's a very boutique car for a specific audience so there are firms like that which are extremely powerful they may not be the biggest by revenue but even then globally speaking this was among the top 15 all right so turned out that that firm was the number one in uae you know definitely the top 3 top 5 and i didn't know that because globally that firm was 13th or whatever uh but regionally it was one of the top firms so that was my first meeting i i went on the website i found the phone number i gave them a call and these firms are not necessarily are going to take meetings with you if you have a very small vision if you have a vision of building a million dollar business they're not interested okay you're better off having a small law firm or a lawyer a private lawyer that can advise you who has worked in one of these firms but to have these kind of firms you need to have a very big vision you know your vision has to be worth your vision has to be to pursue at least hundreds of millions of dollars okay and i i was doing that so i called them up and i said this is what we are doing and these are the people who are on the team the moment i told him the the people that are involved he could smell that there is a deal here uh, there is money here and let's have a meeting so i contacted the top guy and i booked a meeting and he said can you come by 5 i said yes so i immediately got dressed up in a hurry and i went into the car and i really had an attitude maybe this is not going to be the firm i will just do a practice round and see what happens now this law firm was in one of the top 5 star hotels in dubai i can't tell you because you will know which firm this is okay so i'm not going to get into that but it was one of the top 5 uh, star hotels in one of the top areas i go in and it's on the top floor i press the button i mean the whole 5 star hotel was just incredible i just enter in and usually i was advised that if you go to a top firm you got to take some of your board members so i didn't do that because i didn't think i was going to meet a top law firm i was just thinking i was meeting the 13th or 14th you know i didn't uh, but it was in the case i hit the button on the lift i went up and i entered onto a floor of the hotel which was not exposed to normal people because that was the entire floor was their office basically and it was built completely different i mean the gates opened up the floor was different the walls were different the reception was different everything was different it was like i was in a different building and the whole place was made with like these rich marbles you know and the light and everything was just like shining crazy and i could just smell like i could just feel the money in the air it was it was just incredible and i saw there was a extremely beautiful secretary there uh and she looked at me with blue eyes and she said can i help you and i said yes i have a meeting with the managing partner of the firm 
and uh, she said okay may I know your name and I said my name is Prithvi and you can tell him uh, we have an appointment for five o'clock or four o'clock she said okay no worries um, and then I waited and then she came back and then she said please follow me and I went and I entered the law firm and it was conference room after conference room after conference room after conference room and I sat down in one of the conference rooms and it was literally like the set of the TV show Billions. You know, these black marbles surrounded like chandelier and I mean, it was crazy. So I waited and waited and waited. I was extremely nervous and anxious, obviously. I had no idea. I mean, um, it's going to be a firm like this. The managing partner comes in in the shake dress um, and he sits down and he says uh, and I'm 6'2 and he was a little bit taller than me so he shook my, shook my hand and he says how are you sir please tell me how can I help you and then I did my presentation and then he was interested great I said we are going to be investing 250 million dollars we are going to be acquiring 30 40 companies you know and we are looking for a repre representation and then he says, okay, nice, 30, 40 acquisitions. Good, sounds good. Um, what's your minimum ticket size? I said, we are looking at between 1 million to $10 million. The moment I said that, he suddenly like almost went, but then he obviously got his composure because I am a potential customer. So he said, oh, sir, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't think we will be a right firm for you. And I was like, wait a second. You know, I just said one to $10 million per transaction. Like that's a lot of money. The firm is going to make a lot of money. What, I mean, uh, what are you talking? I mean, I, I didn't understand. It says, uh, why is that? He says, I think, you know, I said, so at what level can you get involved? Because I remember my mentor advised me that initially you may have a small firm and then you will graduate to a bigger law firm because your transactions are small. It doesn't make sense to get a big law firm. But once your transaction size increases, you can start, you can then deal with the bigger law firms. So I, I told him, uh, why is that? Okay, fine. What, at what level can you get involved? He says 10 million could be a beginning but really the number would be 20 to 30. That's where we can start. I said, well, I, I don't get it. So, and he says, I said, okay, fine. How much do you charge for uh, doing a due diligence in transaction documents, uh, you know, on one transaction? And he says, we charge around, if there is one share, shareholder in the company, we'll charge around 120 to $130,000 per transaction. Okay, so just to do the paperwork, they're going to charge and some due diligence, they're going to charge $120,000. And if it's two shareholders, it's going to be 240. I didn't react. I just looked at him and I said, okay, I understand. And inside I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And then, um, and then I said, okay, um, fine. Uh, we would also need your help in raising money from the banks and they were like no problem we can do it and i told them we are doing leverage buyouts leverage buyouts is basically when you put the company that you're buying as collateral with the bank and raise money based on the company itself and you pay off and, and you acquire the company you pay off the seller and you acquire the company so he says, yes, we can help you with leverage buyouts. We have uh, just finished a leverage buyout of a $350 million company. We can certainly help you with that. We have the connections and we have the contacts. And I just looked at him and I was like, I mean, I didn't say anything. I maintained my composure, but inside I was like, what? You're telling me somebody did a $350 million leverage buyout. And I was just blown away. I didn't act blown away, but inside I was like, what world is this? 
what circle is this what law firm is this and which company had the fucking balls and audacity to, to do this kind of transaction and you advised on that and you arranged for the financing I mean this was a totally different scale that I had not even dreamt of and that was one transaction it wasn't like this company was built over you know 30 40 years or somebody built this company 30 40 years it was one deal one transaction and it concluded in six to eight months or something he said it's one a deal it's just a deal the that company could have done series of these transactions but it was crazy what what he suggested and then he said i said okay no worries um you know we'll establish contact when we are looking for bigger deals and then we can hire the firm he says no problem sir we're going to be there uh you know um we are at your service and just call us anytime uh and i appreciate so while walking out i said uh, are you allowed to take non-executive positions in companies as director he says i am but i am already on 15 20 boards and uh, my law firm is already getting a little bit worried about me because i'm on too many companies and i advise too many companies first on a personal basis so they don't they kind of frown upon it so i said no worries um we'll uh, reconvene later and i left the office and i came back home and i just thought of that moment that the ground below me just disappeared when he dropped that number uh both the $250,000 and the the $350 million leverage buyout that he did and i was like whoa my dreams i'm thinking too fucking small i'm thinking too small there are these deals happening i met the guy who was involved in these deals i met the law firm that have been involved in these deals why am i looking for small acquisitions why why am i thinking so small my whole life I, I thought to myself, my whole life, whenever I asked for money, I was told it's too much by my parents, by friends or whatever. Oh, it's too much. And for the first time in my life, when I'm talking about millions and tens of millions, I'm being told that this is too small. This is small ticket, my friend. Wake up. This is a small ticket transaction. $10 million, $5 million, $2 million is a small ticket. I know there are, there are a lot of people online that brag about making a couple of million dollars. I'm not trying to demean that, but I'm just saying that in the context of actual business, it's a small ticket. And I didn't know that. And I was being exposed to this whole reality where people don't brag about their success. They downplay their success. They keep it very private. They keep their transactions very private and then they laugh at people who are bragging about making a few million dollars get it so <clears throat> that was a big lesson and i had decided that day that one day i'm going to come back to this firm and i am going to be doing a 350 million dollar deal and i decided i'm going to be wearing a nice savile row suit i'm going to be next to my advisor joking and laughing and not even breaking a sweat before doing a deal of that size and i'll have i'll be right, be right here i will be dealing with the same lawyer and he'll be looking at me with a totally different perspective he's gonna remember that he came in and we had a meeting and now you know his whole position has changed he did everything he said so that was incredible and i want to leave you with that so I'll talk to you soon and if you like the video hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you in the next video.